Hey, bye, Billy Bones. In front of the camera, just showing you guys that I had to change route because, well, this happened. <sighs> There's more. But not to worry, I can fix it. But I can't do it alone. I need the help of Yangus, and I need bangers. Bad news for the segment, getting Yangus costs 8 minutes. Here's the route. New improved extra Angus edition version of this segment is going to start the same way as the previous versions. Now our main goals in this segment, we need to get to Sunrise so we can buy overpowered equipment. We need to level 6 so we can get to the next continent. And now we need to get Yangus because of the door problems. So it's going to start out the same way as the previous version of this route. We're going to do some shopping. We're going to sell that slime crown so we can use the ridiculous amount of gold it gives us to buy overpowered equipment so we can get to our levels quickly and everything else. First up is the weapon shop where we're going to sell that crown for all that gold and start the shopping. In this area of the game, the boomerang is just overpowered. It cuts through the gangs so quickly. So we're going to buy the boomerang so we can cut through these gangs really quickly even though we're level 1. After this, we're running down to the item shop. Now the item shop's a little bit out of the way, but we need to go there because we need wings. Ways we're going to use wings. First wing we're going to use is the God of Fairbury. The next wing we're going to use is right before sunrise, so we get to Port Prospect, so we can do the fun magic trick over there. Wings after that will be to get back to Fairbury. I'm buying a ridiculous amount of herbs. I don't need this many. Uh, what I'm using a lot of this for is to rearrange my inventory a little bit to get that sword out of there and stuff like that. So by buying a lot of stuff and saying yes, rearrange my inventory, you're moving it all into the bag. Also, as aforementioned, we need all those wings, and buying the anecdotal herb just to be on the safe side, because there are those bubble slimes which can poison you, which is very annoying. Now, big time save here. As soon as we start talking to Calderasha, the game moves from dusk to the middle of the night, which is huge. It would actually save time even doing the earlier route to talk to Calderasha and then leave, because the plot moves the time forward faster than just standing in place would. So we actually are saving time right now, but we're going to lose more time because there's extra cutscenes we need to get through to get you, I guess. The other synergies of this extra Yangus edition version of the route is that we don't have the death warp as much because there are some plot points where it gives you a free state and in. Now, the point where we're at right now in the game, we can't use the ends at all, but there are a couple of plot ends that we can use. So we're going to take advantage of those to get our magic points restocked once we get some levels so we can actually cast a vac without having to death warp to get extra magic points. Each one of these cutscenes advances the time of the day slightly. The big jump is when you talk to Calderasha that moves you ahead a whole lot. The rest of these move you forward just sort of a few seconds. But it's still synergistic because you are doing the cutscene and it's not pure loss of time because you are moving the clock forward with the plot. And then once we get to sunrise, we can do the magic shopping. Now the reason why magic shopping works. When the game does a transition from day to night or night to day, it has to change all the NPCs in that area. So if you're in an area where the NPCs have not yet spawned because of the glitch we pulled off earlier, and you're there, day to night or night to day, the game has to change its NPCs, so it just puts the NPCs that should be there at that time. The advantage of this is in Port Prospect, the shops are outside, so we can use those newly spun NPCs to buy things and do some shopping. But none of the NPCs inside of the buildings change, so we can't do anything like stay at that inn or use the church. So the only church that's available to us is going to be Fairbury until we've fully completed all of the opening cutscenes, unlocked Yangus, and unlocked the rest of the world. Now the strategy for text mashing, you want to mash on triangle and hold either forward or down because that will advance the text even faster than just mashing triangle would. Because forward or down goes to the next block of text and triangle skips blocks of text. Give 
running around Fairbury, not grabbing anything because we already grabbed everything earlier on because we wanted extra defensive and healing items for the opening segment. So there's nothing here that's really of any value other than plot. And when you go to talk to Valentina, you don't actually have to be right next to her. You can talk to her from fairly far away because the cutscene is from Hero standing this far away. So all you really have to do when you walk in is walk forward and mash X and you will just start talking to her. And if you play the game casually, like most people you probably don't realize, Calderasha is considered this game's prophet. So if you're ever stuck in the game, you can actually go back to Calderasha and he'll tell you what to do. The same button to advance text is also the button that says no to things. So if you're mashing to get through text quickly and they ask you a question, you will say no to it if you don't slow down and pause, which can happen here very quickly. Because you want to need to say yes to that, otherwise they talk to her again. So you have to make sure that you pause and then start mashing on X. Now once we're here, we're as far into the night as we can go in the plot. Were we to continue the plot, the game would change to the daytime, which we don't want because we want to do the magic shopping at first light and poor prospect. So it's the middle of the night right now for the game. We're about halfway to the morning. And you'll notice how quickly the time moves, because before, in that earlier version of the segment, I was able to do a whole lot of questing, running around, killing mobs, grabbing tool bags, trading things for cheese. Whereas now, I get to do less than half of that, which tells you how far the plot has moved the clock of the game. So our goal right now, we're killing time to get the Magical Sunrise so we can buy even more overpowered equipment. And while we're doing it, we're getting some levels so we can get to level 6 even faster. And we're starting the Cheese Quest from the top waterfall. The big way we're going to get levels is going to be to kill One Night Stand. These mobs, as you see, yeah, you get some experience, but it's almost not worth it because you're getting 2 experience for each of these enemies. So you're getting 6 experience for mobs, sometimes only 4 for mob. And Drakis can be very annoying because they will just dodge things, which takes even longer to kill. I'm getting some pretty good mobs right now, so we'll be able to get to level 2 very quickly. But even if you're only level 1, you can still take out OKS. It really doesn't change the strategy, you're still healing at the same points and you're still attacking the same points. Because all of your damage is coming from the overpowered boomerang, not from your character having a lot of power. Blips can get really annoying, one because even at level 2 it takes 2 shots to take them out, and also because they can lick you which is waste turns on battle because your character will just stand there. And again they only give 2 experience apiece, as most all the enemies in this area do. Now the strategy for OKS is going to be psych up to 50 and attack, which will wipe them out for sure. It's possible to take them out if you're at level 2 and you suck up just the 20. The problem though is that the game has a range of damage and the only way you're going to take them out is if you're at the high end of that range of damage and it's just random luck where you are in that range. So if you have really good luck, you'll take them out at a 20 psych, otherwise you'll take them out at a 50 psych. And you're still healing at the same point, so it doesn't really matter if you're going to 20 or going to 50. It would waste just one turn, not two turns. Because we'd still heal right there and then attack. Right now we're healing and psyching and then attacking. The main reason for deck and OKX is those 28 experience points, which is going to get us to level 3 very quickly. The other reason is okay, he gives you a copper monster coin to get a little bit more gold. And even though 6,000 gold is a lot right now, as soon as we get to Baccarat, it's nothing we get to buy like two things.
Again, those Dracky dodges. Once you start getting up here, you'll notice the game starts lagging quite a bit. When you're all the way up here, it has to load the entire map, and so it just causes quite a bit of slowdown. Two useful things in this house, Seed of Agility, which will be useful, and also the Holy Water, which we're going to use to block out hopefully some encounters when we come back to go into Waterfall Cave. Now as you talk to people, you can move through text very quickly, except for if there is a point of dialogue that's tied to a character's movement. So you'll notice right now, the hermit here on top of the cave does a lot of moving. So the game makes you pause. You can't skip ahead in his dialogue until he completes each one of these movements. So he doesn't say much, but it takes forever to get through it because you can't move to the next point of dialogue until he's done the move that goes along with the previous point of dialogue. So now you'll notice it's almost daytime already. And that was very quick. Before we got all the way to the tool bag, we almost got back here and it was at this point. And even though it seems like the sun's going to come up at any moment, you actually have two encounters before the sun is just about to come up. It takes a long time for the sun to come up. And you notice right now we're getting actually a day encounter. The satyrs are not here at night, they're only here during the day. So you start getting day encounters before the sunrise animation actually happens. So a good way to tell that you're about at sunrise is you start getting different encounters. It tells you, okay, you better get out quick. So we're putting a poor prospect to do some shopping. So we can get overpowered equipment. There's still two things in some barrels we can use. There's the Seed of Wisdom over here, which you're going to grab. And there's also 17 gold in a barrel. Now, fun fact, there's two women NPCs who spawn over there. Uh, one who tells you about not selling stuff, and one who tells you how your skills work. The woman who tells you how your skills work has actually been taken out in the iOS version because the game automatically tells you how all of your skills work. It tells you all things that are coming up and how many points you have and everything and everything else. So what we're buying. First, we need a stone axe. That way Yangus can crit slimes and we can get a whole bunch of experience points. Then we're buying a spear so Hero can crit slimes and we can get a lot of experience points. Then we're buying skill armor so guys are going to barely touch us. And then we're buying a skill shield so guys are going to barely touch us. And then we're buying another skill shield just so Yangus has something cool when you finally unlock him. Now ideally I should also sell that shield so that I have more room on my inventory and I can just hit double scale shield and equip everything. But as I grind this out, there's a lot of optimizations like that that will work out. Also running with the item shop. Now this item shop actually sells holy water which is great because we're going to grab a bunch of holy water which you can use for grinding and just to get rid of bad encounters that we don't want later on once we get overpowered. Now once we're at Fairbury, you would think we could just walk in the front door and then walk out the door because all we're doing in the plot right now is talking to Trode who's waiting outside but you can actually only do that out the side door and you notice we're back in the plot where we left where it's in the middle of the night because the game cares more about plot than about clock so plot will always trump clock whatever the plot needs the time of day to be is what time of day will be 
Just like when you go to Wisher's Point, it's always nighttime. You don't have to play around and go at the end. No, it's always nighttime when you get to Wisher's Peak. Because that's when the moon moves and the door opens and yes. And once we talk to Trode, we get to stay at the end, which is what's going to give us the extra magic points that we're going to need so we can actually cast a vac and get out of Geyser's place without death warping and losing all of our gold. Lesson 101, running RPGs. Don't mash too close to strangers because you will start talking to them instead of opening doors. Lesson learned. Gotta be careful. Even though it seemed like we were nowhere near her, next thing you know, hey look, we're gonna talk. So using some holy water right now, trying to get rid of the low level encounters around here. But we still got quite a number of them. Do you think level 3 with Holy Water would be enough to scare away a Lips? But apparently not, because we're getting Lips fights. And again, they're just useless. Two experience points. And it would be faster just to flee, but he might block the flee. We might be here for a little while. My favorite version of that, I had used Holy Water. I encountered a gang of just two slimes. Decided, oh, I was going to flee. Yeah, they blocked the flee five times before I finally just attacked the boomerang in one shot. Now one version of this would be to hang the right and fight OKS again, but you get better experience from the hammer hood inside, so I've been just fighting the hammer hood on the inside instead of fighting OKS again. Basically just going to take a straight shot to Geyser, take out any gangs that come. And you'll see with the new armor, the scale shield and scale armor, we're taking next to no damage with the gangs. And the boomerang is overpowered, so they're falling very quickly. Yeah, the only detour I'm making is to grab this hat so we have a couple more defense points. One, because it'll make guys are even less scary. Two, because we're not going to get a suitable hat for quite a while, so it might be nice to just have a couple extra defense points. My favorite enemy in this area are the skippers, because they give really good experience points. If you're doing the spear RTA or sword RTA route, you're actually kind of afraid of skippers because they can do a lot of damage. But with their overpowered armor right now, they do next to nothing and they give all that experience points. So we get to six real quick. So we're level four, which happens quickly. But we need to be level 5, plus basically one encounter. And the gap between 4 and 5 is actually still pretty big. Even with these better encounters around here. So two turns, 16 experience, yeah, and 12 of that's just for that one skipper, so they give quite a bit of experience. With just starter equipment, they'd be swinging for 7 or 8, but here, because we're so overpowered, they're only swinging for 1 or 2, so you're not afraid of them at all.
Uh, another good enemy in here are the Devils. They're the next best experience beside the Skippers. The only downside for them is they can cast the uh, Weird Dance, and then your character just dances and wastes a turn. Which, when you have two characters, is not that big of a deal, because the Nyangus can still take them out, but here, it's a big deal, because you're just wasting turn. This encounter with the Hammer Hood would go even faster if I switched to the Spear, because it does have more attack power. But that's some extra menuing, so I'm going to save switching to the Spear until I'm actually up to Geyser. But it probably still would be better to just psych up to 20 and then attack, instead of attack, 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 attack. We're already level 5, we only need one more encounter, and then we'll be at level 6 after we defeat Geyser. So I might be able to cut out the Hammer Hood in this route, but I think the main reason why I'm so good in experience is because of all those skippers, and they give really good experience. So I think in grinding this out, if I've had some good skipper encounters, then I'll skip them. If I haven't, then go ahead and fight them. And then here, even more skippers. So after this encounter, we're exactly where we want to be going to Geyser. And we can just run from every other encounter after this. And our armor and shield is so good, this is the first time we will be healing in the entire cave. We've gone all the way in, we fought every single battle with just one character, and we're healing once. So. Skippers are the best encounter, but if you ask me the worst, are the fire elementals. Those fire spirits, they're just terrible. Reason why, first of all, they can do 7 damage to you. Even with a really good armor, we can still get hit for 7. They can only cast that spell once, and if they try again, it just wastes their magic points, they can't do anything. And they only really attack for about 1, but the main reason they're so terrible, they have really good defense. So even though the boomerang is overpowered, it still takes a number of turns to take them out. They don't get very good experience, and they can do some damage, so they're just not worth it. So, doing it right now, we'll run the inventory. I'm gonna use the hat to do a little better of defense for the rest of the game until we find a suitable hat for hero and we're gonna go and we're gonna equip the spear so we can do a lot more damage if you mess up your inputs here with the crystal ball you will hate your life you have to say yes to geyser as soon as he points at you so mash on triangle as much as you want but as soon as he starts pointing at you you gotta switch over to x otherwise you'll say no and he will hop back in the water and it takes him forever to come back out and you waste a lot of time so now we have the moment of truth and the finger. There you go. Now Geyser is a joke at this point because our equipment is just ridiculous. So what we're going to do is we're going to cycle up to 50 attack, cycle up to 50 attack, and he's dead. That's it. We built the heal a couple times, mainly because these opening attacks do a lot of damage. This attack he's about to do, and his next attack do quite a bit. So the slash with the claws that does 16, okay, that's the scary attack. And his one after that is also pretty damaging. So we're basically be healing every time he does his curse miss, because hero always blocks it no matter what. And that's a good point to grab all of our life again. Now in the second round, he's just going to do a Sizz in an attack, which doesn't do that much damage. But because the attack coming right after that is the slash with the claws, we won't actually we're healed in advance of that slash. So here, Sizz, 8, nobody cares. This next attack will be a couple, but we gotta make sure we heal before the big jumping slash with all claws.
So a really easy fight, even with one character. One, because we have ridiculous armor. Two, because we were already at level five. So between those two, he just falls very quickly. And again, putting all the points into spears so we can crit slimes eventually. Once we get through this cutscene, going to cast a vac to get out of here. Then we're going to use a wing to get into Fairbury. At that point, we're going to save. The only things left to do in Fairbury will be go talk to the Calderashas to finish up the last little cutscenes to get healed again. And then we'll leave and we can finally get out with the Angus and everything else. At which point we can go over to the other continent and do some crazy stuff. The reason I'm saving here, even though it's a little ways, is this is the closest we're going to be to the church. And the next segment will have a lot of crazy stuff going on. So I'm not sure we can save so we can get all the lucky things that we're going to need for the next segment. Now because I'm going to need bangers, there are some decisions to be made in the, not the next segment, but probably segment 4. Because I will have to do half of the Alexandria cutscenes, so it's whether or not to do all the Alexandria cutscenes and take out the squid. If you do all Alexandria cutscenes and take out the squid, the advantage is you get Jessica. And she can do some damage, she can help with the lizard fight. And also you get the alchemy pot, which is kind of a big deal, because we're going to run out of gold real fast. And also because, as you'll see, we won't be able to get into Trodan, so we can't get the magic key. So that further limits what equipment we can have. So we might be very dependent on alchemy, or just ridiculous leveling. But for now, it's going to be grinding out the segment. I'm trying to save. I could probably save another minute or two from what's here. And then the segment after this is the crazy luck segment. You'll see the time we finally save here. I believe it's a uh, plus six minutes from the without Yangus segment I've been working on. And again, we still need a little more uh, cutscenes over at the Calderasha residence. So it's probably going to add about eight minutes total to go with Yangus. But thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Dude, seriously? Unprofessional roommates.